everyone, welcome to the courtroom, a show that is your weekly guide into the courtrooms of the country. On the news patch show this week, the Securities Appellate Tribunal sets aside two member committee report headed by former SEBI board member Dr. Mohan Kupal on NSDL's role in the IPO scam. The depository and its then chairman CV Bhave exonerated once again. Not every part or interpretation of the landmark arbitration judgment by the Supreme Court Constitution bench last year is to be applied prospectively, says the Bombay High Court. GSK's breast cancer drug labotinib's base patent is upheld by the IBAP, but the board opens the door for generic drug makers after 2019. Will this ruling silence critics against India's patent regime or not? Any rights of a shareholder, if not part of Articles of Association, will not be enforceable. The Delhi High Court ruling broadens the laid down principle that Articles of Association overrides shareholder agreements. But before we take you through these stories, here's a look at what else made news in the legal arena. The Supreme Court pulled up the government for not forming an appropriate national policy on pricing of drugs for over 10 years while hearing a PIL seeking rationalization of essential drug pricing. The court has asked the government along with the association of 19 drug manufacturers involved in the case to reply to the allegations in the PIL filed by All India Drug Action Network within six weeks. Meanwhile, the Delhi High Court has issued notices in another matter where seven pharma companies have challenged the government's new drug pricing order that has asked them to slash prices of 348 medicines. In the SEBI Sahara tussle, Sahara is contented before the Supreme Court that they have not attempted any contempt of court. SEBI, on the other hand, told the Apex Court that Sahara directors and promoters should be awarded maximum imprisonment for contempt of court by not complying with its order of refunding 24,000 crore rupees to investors. The matter will now come up for hearing on August 13th. The Supreme Court has directed the government to provide full cooperation to CBI in its investigation in the coal scam matter with all the relevant documents. The court has asked CBI to furnish a fresh status report of the coal scam probe by August 25th. The court will now hear the matter next on August 29th. In a case where DOT filed contempt petition against KM Birla, chairman of Idea Cellular, the Delhi High Court has asked Idea to file the affidavit within two weeks, claiming that they have not acquired any new 3G customers after the court's order. DOT had alleged contempt of court by Idea Cellular for acquiring new 3G customers despite earlier court order restraining them to do so. Idea has refuted this argument by saying they are not acquiring new customers. The court will now hear the matter on 4th of September. A class action lawsuit has been filed against Infosys in the U.S. against its hiring activities. This lawsuit alleges that Infosys is discriminating against U.S. job applicants and favoring South Asians. According to this lawsuit, 90% of the employees hired in the U.S. are South Asians, including people from India, Nepal and Bangladesh. Well, after battling controversies time and again on its role in the IPO scam, the NSTL's crowns are upheld yet again by the Securities Appellate Tribunal. The two-member committee order directing NSTL to conduct inquiry to fix individual responsibility is also set aside by the tribunal and thereby clearing all questions that have been raised against former chairman of NSTL and former chairman of SEBI, C.B. Bhave. Avantika Gode takes us through the order and its implication. This has been a long drawn issue, the effect of which has been a heavy hang cloud of controversy on both NSDL as well as CB Bhave. The SAG bench has now upheld NSDL's appeal, challenging SEBI's move to revive the Mohan Gopal committee order. Let's rewind and take a look at this tussle from the very start. The massive 500 crore IPO scam in question took place between 2003 and 2005. Allegedly, thousands of Benami accounts were created for nearly 21 IPOs that came out during this time. SEBI passed his coachman orders against the two depositories, NSDL and CDSL, both of which approached SAT 
challenging SEBI's order. In 2009, SAT allowed both these appeals and set aside SEBI's orders. After C.B. Bhave took over as SEBI chief in 2008, a two-member committee was constituted by the Finance Ministry to take over and dispose of ongoing quasi-judicial proceedings against NSDL by the market regulator. The two-member committee passed an order in December 2008 stating there were deficiencies on part of NSDL as well as SEBI. In 2009, the SEBI board, however, declared the order null and void on the grounds that the directions issued by the committee were beyond its mandate. But this issue surfaced all over again in 2011 when Supreme Court took up the PIL filed against SEBI's move of declaring this very order null and void. Thereafter, SEBI replied to the Supreme Court that it will reconsider the entire order and the order subsequently was made public in 2011. And that led to NSDL knocking the doors of the tribunal against the revival of the two-member committee order. NSDL argued before the Securities Appellate Tribunal that SEBI could not continue proceedings only against NSDL and keep CSDL aside because the alleged lapses were on part of both the depositories. Additionally, that the allegations against NSDL have already been set aside by the tribunal previously. NSDL also made a case that the order directed them to conduct an independent audit and investigation which has already been complied with. SEBI on its part stated that it decided to reconsider the Mohan Gopal Committee report in spirit of the observations made by the Supreme Court. The order directs NSDL to fix individual responsibility and it does not cast any stigma nor does it seek to penalize NSDL. Therefore, NSDL's strong contention against the order is unjustified. On the question of the allegations against C.V. Bhave, the bench observed that Bhave had recused himself from the proceedings against NSDL and that neither Bhave nor the Finance Minister nominee on the SEBI board were a party to the proceedings against NSDL. Also in favour of NSDL, Securities Apple Tribunal held that NSDL did investigate the IPO scam to a certain individual responsibility. The order states, and I quote, in the impugned order, neither the two-member committee of the respondent has found fault with the inquiry report of the appellant dated June 10, 2006, nor has it recorded any reason on the basis of which a fresh investigation to fix individual accountability has been ordered. Therefore, in absence of any cogent reason for rejecting the investigation already carried out, directing a fresh investigation is wholly unjustified. Well, this is certainly a crucial judgment as it ends the blame game between SEBI and NSDL and more importantly puts to rest the controversy around this case. Well, not everything is prospective about the Constitution bench's arbitration judgment and is India again in spotlight for its patent ruling on GSK. More on that when we return.